I'm a game artist and I love to make your crazy Minecraft ideas. For this video, I have picked up five of my favorite suggestions and your mustache compadre have been coding a lot behind the scenes in this video. <laughs> Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy. The Legend of King Arthur the young boy who managed to pull a sword out of a stone. The sword Excalibur. I'm taking this ID and I'm reimagining this sword Excalibur as an axe of royal heritage. Sworn to the next king, it sits in the royal courtyard waiting for a prince. With this sketch, I can now move over to block bench and start preparing what I want the shapes to be like before texturing this item. I imagine that it goes within gold and iron for the most part of the overall design, so when I get to the texturing phase in a moment, I'm gonna spend a lot of time trying to figure out where I want these shapes to go. Mostly the iron and steel kind of on the main blade, and then detailing the rest of the shaft and the head of this item with the kind of golden inlays as you can see here. I imagine that gemstones would have made this design even more royal, but what if I did this instead? I can't get it loose. <laughs> what? You judging me because I wanted to get this axe for myself? Oh, well, look at yourself. You want to wheel this axe inside of Java Minecraft? Well, here you go. I suppose I'll just give this to the community for free then. Why not? Just check over on Discord. And in the last video, the General Grievous inspired robot samurai won with a swooping 52% against everything else in the competition. Nice. What is more fitting during spooky month than to make something spooky? And before we actually work on the model, I want to try out making my concept art more so along the style of a realistic type of rendition of skeleton creepers. And if this is something you guys want me to make a video series of where I try to make realistic Minecraft mob ideas or similar, then tell me down in the comments down below. And when I was happy with the overall layout and aesthetic, I decided to put on some snake skin and just warp it into position and give it some proper shading before then finalizing this into what I like to call a creepy setting. And if that design phase didn't blow you away, let me get you introduced to something else. The model of our creepy skeleton, creepier skeleton, singing with jigger. I'm adding a spine to him and also adding inner bone segments to the legs because I want to have this cut out that you might have seen in the previous part of the video where we can actually see the bones inside of the legs that are defragmenting somewhat. And I'm also racing away from having painted the main body so I can get the bones painted onto the rest of our model, which is going to bring together the spine and the rib cage. And after that, I'm just moving over to finalizing the legs and hips. And hmm, no, there is definitely something missing here. Ah, once upon a time, there was a family of skeleton creepers living in the field. But then the pillagers came. Their evil leader, Jerry, was no fan of villagers and their friends. And a brutal fight went out. Creepy skeletons exploding left, right and centers and pillagers falling in the midst. And in all of the chaos, their house was lost. Luckily, the good friends the villagers let them live with them happily forever after. Ooh. Ah. Now, I really hope the next idea is Lego. Oh, hmm. Can we? Yeah, that's that Lego. Thank you. The reason why I'm showing Lego in this video is because I feel personally that Lego and Minecraft has a lot in common, not only because of the Minecraft sets, but also because of the creative process that it takes to come up with and create your own Lego structure. I mean, this is a pretty nice set, isn't it? This mod review is of the Runestones mod. I mean, I know a bit about runes. I'm Swedish, so that practically makes me a Viking, right? But history is not going to help me come up with a good concept for this runestone, so instead I started looking into sci-fi reference materials. Star Wars, Doom, Halo, a bunch of these themes that together made me come up with this design. A magical core stone of sorts, with this centralized piece that would hum with an ominous noise, and then the rest of the stone kind of encapsulating and protecting this inner core. Maybe this is a remnant of an ancient alien society. Maybe a beacon, some kind of transponder that sends information to an ancient galaxy. Or maybe it's just a unit that collects all of the souls of the society that lives nearby and breathes into this machinery of death or doom. But ultimately I wanted this to become a friendly piece and remove the red and replaced it with a cyan blue. The origin of this runestone remains a mystery, but one thing is for certain, it spins, in more than one way. Hey, why aren't you subscribed? This series needs your ideas. I need your ideas. 
See? Otherwise we get this kind of content. You have to watch me punch a log for half an hour and then I'm gonna build a crafting table and, and then I'm gonna harm some wheat and feed a chicken and then I'm gonna toss that away and make bread. Now, I thought it was gonna be easy to come up with my own concept for the netherite golem, but just look at Gogol. There's so many suggestions of iron golems being tormented by fire, love and death. And that's where my idea sparked. What if I made my own golem of fire, lava and death? And what if I actually made it work? Yeah, you can see me here sitting and just concepting out a bit of what I want the design to look like before moving over into block bench. Now, my overall goal here is to try to keep it fairly vanilla Minecraft. I'm working with simple cubes as much as possible. Some special details though, of course, because this is a pretty large mob. And then working in the colors and textures, I want to have this ancient machinery that is lava powered because this thing lives in the lava. Once deserved, this hostile creature walks up on land and becomes your demise. Not only does the lava golem take literally no damage because of netherite, and it's obviously completely fire resistant because this creature does not only live around in the lava and deal a lot of damage with its AOE ability, it is also the builder of the bastions and the safekeeper of the nether. This is an intriguing idea, because we have the biggest land-living mammal on Earth, the elephant. You know, the thing that just goes if it steps on you? Yeah, that thing. What intrigues me about this idea is the fact that it's controlled by a mouse, like a literal little small rodent that sits somewhere on the elephant. So the question becomes, well, where does it sit? I want to imagine something along the lines of rescuers slapped onto the back, but since an elephant is pretty big and a mice is really small, I'm imagining maybe it's supposed to sit somewhere further up ahead with more viewpoints. Now adding a scarf and all of the necessary details to this super tiny mouse and then a texture onto it as well to really bring out the overall visual so you can tell that it's a mouse batting the nose there, all of the colors, the goggles and then flipping all of that over to the other side once done will really make sure that you can see exactly what the overall visual aesthetic of this guy is. There we have some fists and then of course also a classic green bomber jacket once I'm done with the scarf. I don't need to make any feet to this character because I have an idea. As I'm building the cockpit, I'm actually going to fake a shadow below the mouse, insinuating that it's been lowered down into a further region of the cockpit which we cannot see. Thus, I just need to focus on the jacket itself, and then build the visor and everything that goes up, ahead and front of the mouse itself. But let me just wrap up the rest of the elephant. We don't need the big ears because this is going to be using jets for feet. Which was your favorite? Let me know in the poll that goes up after this video. And if you want to support my content here on the channel, please join us on Patreon.